Sugar, a word that represents almost all that is sweet in our lives. It is what we use in most of the things that we eat or drink. It is also a word we often associate with the beautiful white crystals we see in a sugar bowl. We know that sugar is mostly produced from the sugarcane plant. But how do we turn the sap of this giant grassy plant into the glittering crystals in the sugar balls? Sugar, as we know it, comes from the sucrose or glucose that is manufactured in all green plants through photosynthesis. This is a process by which plants generate energy and food reserves from sunlight. It takes a sugarcane plant between 12 to 22 months to mature. It needs a hot climate with lots of sun and water to grow well. In our company, over 57,000 hectares of sugarcane fields can be found in the region of Mpumalanga and northern KwaZulu-Natal. Once the sugarcane plants have reached maturity, they are harvested and taken to the sugar mill. The cane arrives at the weigh bridge on 30-ton trucks. Upon arrival, it is put on a computerized system which allows the mill to know exactly where each bundle of cane came from. The truck offloads the cane onto a feeder table where the milling process begins. First, the sugar cane stalks are cut into shreds by rotating knives. Cane stalks have a hard outer shell and a soft inner core of fiber. A cane stalk typically consists of 15% sucrose, 15% fiber, and 70% water. To reach the soft inner core and extract the sucrose, the cane stalks are sent through a set of mechanical knives that cut the cane stalks into small pieces as well as shredding the hard outer shell and soft inner fibers. The prepared cane is then moved to a diffuser where the hot water washes out the sucrose from the prepared cane. From the diffuser, the washed out cane goes to the mills where it is squeezed between giant rollers to force out the rest of the juice from the fibers. The dry fiber that is left behind is known as bagasse. Nothing is wasted when it comes to sugar cane. The bagasse is used as biofuel for the boilers that generate steam. The steam is used to drive the turbo alternators, which in turn generate power for the factory. After the sweet juice is dissolved with hot water and squeezed from the fiber, it is moved to a purification plant. At this point, the juice still contains a large amount of small fibers, sand and mud. To remove the fibers, it is poured through a wire mesh screen. During the purification process, the juice is also heated and lime is added to neutralize the natural acidity present in sugarcane. The juice is then placed in large settling tanks that are called clarifiers. The purpose of the clarifier is to produce a clear juice that has a light golden color and is free of suspended matter. The clarified juice or clear juice is then further concentrated. About two thirds of the water that is in the clear juice at this stage is removed through evaporation. The ideal is to reach a stage where the syrup contains no more than 35% water and is called syrup. The syrup produced by the evaporation process is concentrated even further in specifically designed vessels known as vacuum pans. The purpose of the pans is to grow sugar crystals from the sucrose in the syrup. As the concentration rises, so the dissolved sugar will crystallize. This process is assisted by seeding the dissolved sugar with a fine sugar dust that can provide a nucleus for crystals to form around it. The next step is to separate the sugar crystals from the concentrated syrup that is now known as molasses. This process of separation is done in centrifugals. Centrifugals are revolving machines that has a cylindrical basket suspended on a spindle. When the sugar syrup is spinning at a very high speed, the sugar crystals are retained in the cylindrical basket while the molasses syrup passes through a perforated round metal sheet on the outside of the basket. The syrup is flung outside the wire basket due to the centrifugal force created by the machine. Once the sugar crystals are separated from the molasses, it is sent for drying. In the dryer, the sugar crystals are tumbled in heated air, much like clothes are dried in a tumble dryer. The raw sugar is then stored, packed or further refined into top quality white sugar. The different products are processed and packed at the packaging plant in commodities ranging from 5 grams to 1 ton bags. 
The packed sugar is warehoused and dispatched to customers across Southern Africa on a daily basis. The sweet success of sugar is used for so much more than making our food and drink taste better. Sugar and molasses have many functional attributes, such as acting as a preservative, a balancing agent, and assisting in fermentation. Molasses and bagasse are also important ingredients in the production of animal feed. Let us then remember that sugar not only makes our lives sweeter, it also makes it better.